I just did something I wasn't too sure about. I bought the new 15 inch M4 MacBook Air, even though I already own an M2 Max Mac Studio and a 2017 16 inch MacBook Pro. At first, I thought I might be downgrading, but after traveling with it, testing it, and running my actual business on it, I was shocked. This isn't just a lightweight laptop, it's a performance machine in disguise. So let me break down why this MacBook Air might actually be the upgrade that you didn't expect. My name is Sebastian from Awake Abroad Media, and like you, I create content and I run my business remotely. In today's video, I'm gonna share my first impressions of this M4 MacBook Air, the things that I like about it, the things that I don't, and why I chose this over a MacBook Pro. And by the end of this video, I hope I bring you closer to making a decision because like me, you're probably watching a whole bunch of videos to see if this is the right computer for you. So let's dive right in. So I'm gonna give you some context as to who I am and what I use this computer for. So I create content and I travel a lot. And at my home office, my M2 Mac Mac Studio handles all the heavy workload that I usually have in a day. But when I'm in the go, I need something that is light and portable that I can move around with and still is able to perform. And for that, I use my 2017 MacBook Pro, which I'm now decommissioning. Since I have an upcoming trip to Europe, I need something that is lightweight and powerful. And that's where this computer comes in. I decided to get the M4 MacBook Air and what I found surprised me. So in this video, I'm gonna share my first impressions of the MacBook Air, particularly for how I use it, which is video editing, multitasking. And I'm gonna let you know, honestly, if this is a computer that you should get if you're considering getting it for the same reasons that I got it for. Also a quick note on the unboxing, Apple absolutely killed it as always, sleek, simple, and premium. And that tactile pull when you open the box, it's a chef's kiss. But one thing caught me off guard, I didn't get an Apple sticker, did you? What the or maybe they just discontinued it and I didn't know. All right, let's get right into it. In terms of video editing, I primarily use DaVinci Resolve for all of my video edits. I also use Google Chrome with like a gazillion tabs all the time and a lot of AI and ChatGPT stuff as well. And when it comes to the RAM hogs, the apps that use up most of your RAM, it's gonna be DaVinci Resolve and Google Chrome, of course. So I got the 32 gigabyte RAM option, which is the highest tier of RAM that you can get on the MacBook Air. And honestly, scrubbing through time lines is super smooth, including with 4K footage, multitasking between Chrome and ChatGPT and DaVinci. It's it's dope. Like there's no freezing. It's all smooth. I even render the same video on both the Air and my MacBook Pro and the Air was faster, of course. And here's something interesting. While I was doing a test uh, rendering of a one minute video, it took three minutes to render. I don't know why this happened. I don't know if it was thermal throttling or not. The computer wasn't warm or anything, but it was really slow. So so then I clicked render again, and the next time it rendered it in one minute. So maybe it's the settings that I have on DaVinci Resolve since I just literally installed it on the computer. However, I'm gonna keep testing it throughout this video, and I'm gonna let you know how it actually performs in comparison to my 2017 MacBook and my Mac Studio. So I've actually filmed this entire video on my iPhone 16 Pro Max with this dope setup that I just built with an external SSD that also has two USB ports, one for your microphone and one for power, which makes the iPhone a cinematic setup. So if you wanna learn more about that, make sure to subscribe because I'm gonna be dropping a video breaking it down. I think this is probably one of the best setups that you can have if you are on the go. Like if you're vlogging or traveling a lot, your iPhone shooting in ProRes and a MacBook Air does wonders. But now let's talk about battery life, which is one of the concerns that I had having a smaller computer with a smaller battery. I recently flew to the Attention Summit in St. Petersburg, Florida with Ryan Megan and some amazing creators. And I brought both of my computers, the 2017 16 inch MacBook Pro and the 15 inch M4 MacBook Air. Jazz and I sat side by side for three eight hour days taking notes. The MacBook Air lasted me four days before I had to charge the battery and the MacBook Pro died within two days of using the battery. And to contextualize, I was doing the exact same task on both of these computers, having a Google Chrome with Google Docs open on both computers and just taking notes all day. And I gotta say, yesterday I edited my first video on this computer, it's just a minute long video for Instagram Reels, and the battery like barely went down. I think it took me like an hour to edit that video and it just very slowly chewed away at the battery, but it didn't overheat or anything. Unlike my MacBook Pro, it does tend to lose the battery a little bit quicker, even though I got an Apple certified battery installed by Apple on the, my older computer. And I gotta say, I am quite pleased with the M4 MacBook Air so far on the battery side. Now, one of the things that I was very concerned about was this whole thermal thing. The fact that this computer doesn't have fans and 
it basically warms up whenever you put it under high stress editing or anything like that. And so far I haven't had any problems. Like I said, I was editing a video. The computer got a little bit warm, but not hot. So I still had it on my lap and it was perfectly fine. The build quality is top notch. The keyboard feels amazing. The screen is sharp and vibrant and it's definitely an upgrade for me from my 17 inch MacBook Pro to this new M4 MacBook Air. Now, of course, I'm not gonna compare this to like an M4 MacBook Pro because the MacBook Pro obviously has more cooling capabilities and more performance capabilities with the Pro and the Max chip, but the M4 chip is extremely powerful. And this is definitely an upgrade from my MacBook Pro. And now let's talk about the speakers because I think they're really good. I was watching a video where someone said that they're not that great, but honestly, when I put them side by side, they sound amazing. Uh, the only difference is that you don't have the speaker grill. So the audio doesn't sound as full. And I believe the MacBook Air has two less speakers within the little speaker compartment enclosure than the MacBook Pro. So if speakers on your laptop is a big deal for you, just use headphones. Now, one of the main reasons why I got this computer is portability. Portability is a big deal for me. For short co-work days, the Pro is fine, but for longer trips like the one we're planning to Europe, I'm gonna need something light to carry with me. The 15 inch M4 MacBook Air is the perfect middle ground. Large enough screen for productivity, but light enough to carry all day. and I'm a big screen type of guy. And this gives me that without the bulk. Now, of course, this computer isn't perfect and it does have its limitations. You know, you have to sacrifice, you know, give and get. For a lower price point and a smaller package, you are gonna be missing out a couple of USB ports on the other side and the HDMI port. So on one side, you have the 3.5 millimeter auxiliary cable port. And on this side, you only have two USB-C ports and the MagSafe charger. Glad that they brought it back because it frees up a port. It's just more convenient, especially when like you pull a cable and, and it doesn't up your shit. Of course, with less ports means you can plug in less things to your computer. So one of the ways that I worked around that, which is one of the main things that you may be wondering is storage. A lot of people say you can get an external SSD, plug it in, stick it to the back of the screen. And that's a good workaround for spending less money on your computer storage but I actually decided to spend more get the one terabyte drive on the M4 MacBook Air and not have to deal with external storage as much you know I plan on keeping this computer at least for like three to five years so having that internal storage is gonna help me as my content needs grow and the storage needs grow and as I said earlier I also maxed out the RAM to 32 gigabytes of RAM I think that's honestly like the minimum that I would get if you're gonna be doing 4k video editing and multi multitasking like I do. Uh, it's just also a great way to future-proof yourself. Even though Apple has the unified memory, you don't really want to be relying on your internal SSD for RAM. But if you ever do need additional RAM, the Apple M4 chip can just kind of swap with your SSD. That's another reason why I got a whole terabyte. So overall, this configuration has given me peace of mind, especially for multitasking and longevity and is a solid grab and go setup. So who is this laptop for? And should you get the M4 MacBook Air? Well, I gotta say, if you're upgrading from an Intel MacBook or even an early M1, the M4 Air will feel like a massive jump. It's perfect for creators, entrepreneurs and content professionals who need power on the move, but don't need a full-blown 8K and 3D rendering. For what I do, editing and running my business on the go, this computer is a dream. I've actually edited this entire video on the M4 MacBook Air just to test it and, and see how it performs. And I gotta say, it's worked amazing. I have no complaints whatsoever. The timeline is so smooth. The screen is nice and crisp. The audio from the speaker sounds great. I love the keyboard and the tactile touch. The battery lasts me enough for me to edit at least one entire YouTube video. And personally, I haven't yet encountered this thermal throttling that people talk about. As someone who edits a lot of videos, I thought I was gonna miss my MacBook Pro. And I'm not saying that the M4 MacBook Air is better than a MacBook Pro. Of course, a MacBook Pro is gonna be better. 
but computers have gotten so darn good in the last five years that you could honestly use a MacBook Air for everything that you think you may need it for. But of course, I wanna hear from you. Do you own the M4 MacBook Air? Is it a computer that you're considering buying? And what do you use it for? Or what do you plan to use it for? Let me know in the comments and let's have a conversation to make sure that this is the right computer for you and for me. I hope I don't regret it. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel because I'll be dropping an update of this computer probably in around six months time to let you know if it still holds up. So if you're someone that's upgrading from an Intel or from an M1 and you're considering upgrading, I'll let you know what's good in a few months as well. My name's Seb and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace. Thank you.